Welcome to this episode of Locked In. In this episode, I'm going to be doing my full gear that I'm going to be wearing and the layering system and how I'm going to keep it all clean in this very video for my lengthy eight day, 550 mile San Francisco to LA bike ride. If that's something you want to watch, please stay tuned and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. So I just recently released my entire bike setup video. So if that's something you're interested in, please go watch that. I do mention a few of these items that I'm wearing, but I finally got all my kit in and have everything arranged. And I basically wanted to show off if somebody's never done this before of my thought process of how I'm gonna layer everything and bring the minimal amount of clothes that is the most versatile for all my options. So I'm gonna be physically showing you each individual item, then I'm gonna layer up and show you the couple different combos and the specific gear that I'm picking and why. But let's get started with my base kit. So the core of my entire kit that I mentioned in the last video is my red white bib shorts cargo short. Now this is brand brand new for them and I'm really excited to try these out and I will be doing a full review so make sure to turn notifications on so that you can see it when it comes out. But these are basically the most versatile bibs that I've ever worn and red white is renowned for their endurance bibs that basically feel the most comfortable in my opinion that I've ever tested for the longest amount of mileage. I do have a review for those bibs so I'll put that in the description below and those bibs were originally what I was going to wear and I reached out to them about these new cargo bibs. The cool thing with these and again I'll show you everything when it's, it's all on is it has side cargo pockets which is definitely something that's been done but the real key factor for me that does add a ton of more versatility is the dual pockets in the back. So you have a lower back pocket that you can access basically right underneath your jersey by only slightly lifting it up and then you have fully secured pockets here like you would in a mountain jersey that are going to be fully enclosed or basically under your bib for items you want to secure. So this is going to open up a ton of options for me to carry stuff while on the bike if my bags are already loaded or I don't want to undo or take anything out and I want to pick up some extra food or items even if it's just a quick 7-Eleven run instead of having to pack it anywhere I can just throw it in one of these many of pockets and again I really love their pad and it's very very comfortable and designed for three plus hour rides and trust me we're gonna be doing that every single day on this trip. Then I have the one piece of Rafa clothing that I do own and that is a merino base layer. As some of you may know merino is basically just a great moisture wicking material that isn't too hot or too cold as well as it doesn't smell and that's one of the big key features for this for me is that again it's just minimal clothing since we are doing a trip and this is literally all I'm bringing. I'm not bringing spares of any of my cycling kit so this is just going to help everything from smelling and be an extra layer of warmth that I can put underneath my jersey so that I basically can layer up over it. I probably will be wearing this every single day based on the weather being in the mid to low 50s in the morning and the highs of basically mid 60s on this ride as far as right now. So this will be again coupled underneath my jersey. And as far as jerseys go I'm actually going to be wearing a custom design that I created for me and Mario when we raced cross season and we basically called ourselves the fade gang because we have a we had really crazy colored bikes. So this is a kit that he actually sourced that was produced in Mexico and it's actually really really comfortable and it's something where we both talked about it and it makes sense for us both to be wearing a similar kit so that if people do see us and we are spread apart you'll be able to recognize who we're with uh, and it probably just look good for Instagram and I've been loving it and I've been thinking about redoing this kit with the slow but look pro logo on here and if that's something you guys would want to do and do like a pre-sale or or a small run of kits let me know in the description below we've been testing these out and refining the fit I think we have something that I think you would enjoy then that's going to go on to my socks which are going to be a merino wool sock from Bellwether again for the warmth and the lack of smelly stink but I will be carrying another pair of socks with me as well. So we'll be able to switch those out at the end of the day so that one can be drying and still be wearing some to stay warm and not be sockless the entire evening. Then as far as gloves go, I'm gonna have two pairs. I'm gonna have one pair of these Body Geometry Specialized Gloves. I'm a big fan of these because they're very, very lightweight. So they're very breathable. I'm not a huge fan of wearing gloves unless it's very cold. And I really do like that they have just a minimalist pad in the middle of the palm because realistically that's where you put most of your pressure. So these will be my first glove that I'll have on and then those will hide underneath my set of Bellwether Windstop gloves. Now these are thicker wind resistant material. They aren't the most waterproof but I'll probably be carrying a set of just plastic rubber gloves that I use to work on my bike with me for working on the bike as well as putting those on as a extra layer to protect my hands from the rain if it does rain. So these I can put over the specialized gloves to add a double layer of warmth so if I need to go even warmer than these offer that's how I do it. And I always recommend people for an overglove, maybe size up so that you can do that to add layers, especially if the temperature is going to be changing on you. On top of my head is a Walls cap. I've done a review for these. This is their ultralight, very, very breathable cap. I really do enjoy wearing a cap when I'm riding because I do sweat quite a bit. 
and having the bill on the cap allows the sweat to drip forward and away from my eyes or into my glasses. So this I do really enjoy and since it is thin and breathable, it doesn't overheat me too easily. Then due to the temperature that I mentioned before, I will be carrying a pair of thermal Giro knee warmers. I'm a big fan of knee warmers in general because of an old, a few old injuries I have to my knees. They are more sensitive to the cold than my upper half is. So this is something that I'll be wearing again probably most of the trip, at least in the mornings when I get going. Now I know this is probably going to be overkill, especially for you people that are riding in colder or wetter climates, but there is a possibility of two days of rain. So these Pearl Izumi overshoes may or may not be coming with me. My Giro's are pretty well worn in and very breathable, which is great for letting the heat out, but it does let a lot of cold air in. So I may be bringing these with just in case, but we'll see what ends up happening. As far as my face, I am bringing just a lightweight bandana. I do have a mask in my bike as well for obviously doing going in and out of the stores, but this is something that in case it's just cold and wind chill in the morning, I can put this on. And the reason why I like the bandana is because I can put it behind my neck as well in case it is sunny and use it as an extra layer of sun protection. Then my vest of choice that I did show in my last video is the Giro Reflective Vest. Now they don't make this anymore, but you can see here, let me see on camera, light on it, how cool this really looks. And I think this is like the best way to do high vis in my opinion, instead of just the bright yellows. I think this draws a lot of attention whether or not it's zipped up on me. I really just like the effect that this does. And they do have a small product run of this, but I don't know if they're currently making it or if you can get it anymore, but this is definitely my favorite jacket to wear for visibility. And since it has a, I'd say mild mesh panel in the back. It does stay pretty warm. It's not the most vented that I've seen, but this is my go-to vest when layering up. As far as shoes go, these are my very well worn in and reviewed on the channel, Giro Cylinder Shoes. These have a ton of miles on them and are super, super comfortable. But as you can see here at the top, they are very well vented, which is a good thing when it's warm, but not so great when it's cold or raining. So this is why I'm thinking about bringing those over shoes. And these things have a ton of miles. I'll probably retire these potentially after the trip but they've lasted the test of time and been pretty good, but they definitely are starting to feel a little bit more broken in. Then that's gonna lead me to the last layer of clothing that's most likely gonna be for casual or evening riding, but just in case it does rain or it just gets crazy, crazy cold, I do have a REI rain jacket I have had for I think about 10 years. It has a hood in it. It doesn't pack up super small and isn't the lightest weight thing. I do have a lighter weight cycling rain jacket, but I figured this would be better for off the bike as well if we are running around town and it does have a lot of pockets that are easy to access on the bike as well and can be cinched up pretty, pretty snug. So this is gonna be something that will only be used in extreme cases and hopefully I won't need it on the bike. Then when off the bike, as I mentioned, we're gonna be, I'm gonna be wearing my Chrome Merino wool t-shirt, but this can be also added as a layer over everything and underneath my vest or jacket when on the bike if I'm just extremely cold. Again, every item of the clothing can be used in tandem all together if need be for the ultimate amount of warmth. Then we have my Giro shorts that I'll be wearing. Again, if it's really cold in the morning, since the bibs I'm wearing are not thermal or warm, I can wear these to add a layer of warmth in the morning and then easily take these off and stuff this in my saddlebag that I showed you on that video of my bike setup. Lastly is a nice city item. Instead of bringing sandals because it is gonna be cold, I found these super lightweight and flexible little water shoes or water socks on Amazon. And these things I've used camping or bike camping and they're great. And so I just wanted to have something so I could get out of my cycling shoes. But if you really wanted to not need to bring shoes, honestly, wearing mountain shoes all day, especially those Giro's I've had no problems with, but these will just be a nice change of pace to be out of my cycling shoes when we're off the bike. So that's all of the items broken down, but let's do a cool YouTube transition and just snap me into clothing. So let's do lightweight first layer setup. Ah, did I nail it? <laughs> so as you can see here, this is my, my red white bib short, which is actually carrying my mic pack right now. <laughs> this is my cargo bib and Rafa base layer. Again, I'll probably be wearing this in conjunction with my knee warmers every single day on this ride, because again, I can store stuff up high like a phone or even a jacket or a pair of gloves in the mid pocket here where I have my mic pack. This obviously I can throw ve my vest even because of the carrying capacity here. Then I have the side cargo pockets that easily can store snacks of any variety of sizes. And again, this bib is designed for an ultra distance setup. Now let's put on the jersey. If I had an editor, I'd be like, cue sexy music, but I edit my own videos, so do what you want, Michael. <laughs>
So obviously I have the jersey. This is a full length zipper jersey so I can easily cool down if I do get too warm. And this base layer, I've ridden it in all the way up to temperatures to about 80. And yes, it is warmer than not wearing a base layer, but I've never overheated badly. And we're not gonna see any kind of temperatures like that on this trip as far as we know. We can simply add the bandana, my cycling cap. Oh yeah, I didn't mention what helmet I'm bringing. That's gonna be my specialized Prevail. This is basically the best fitting and lightest weight helmet that I own and works well with the cap because not all the helmets that I have actually do. Then I could add on my cool vest and aesthetically, I mean, killing it, right? Like I said, if you're slow, you might as well look pro. So we can add this on, again, either open to cool down if need be or zip it up fully. The one thing I didn't mention that I don't think I'm gonna be wearing but it's just because of how my body is as far as warmth wise, is I could obviously have a set of arm warmers, but realistically up top, I kind of like my arms exposed to cool myself and regulate my temperature, but that's something you could easily add in. Then we have my body geometry gloves. I can then double layer this. Man, if I start sweating in this video, it's gonna be a problem. No one wants to watch that. Okay, so now I have my double mittens on. Now in case if it rains and the worst case scenario, and now I feel just like wearing all of my clothes, I can easily throw on my merino wool shirt, my shorts, and then my jacket, <laughs> and I'm ready to ride, and I'm ready to sweat. So this is basically the entire order of putting everything on if I wanted. Obviously the vest could go over my shirt, but if I'm lazy and it's just already on, I can throw it over. But as you can see, everything can be worn in tandem and is fit properly. I still even have room in this wool t-shirt, even though it's over a few different layers, so that I'm comfortable no matter how layered up or down that I am. And using this system, it allows you to carry the least amount of items while on the bike, and then that's gonna lead me into how we're gonna keep everything clean every single night. So I'm gonna walk you through the steps of that. I'm gonna make it a separate video on physically actually doing it. I'm gonna walk you through how we're gonna do it so that you can not stink and ruin everyone's day as you ride by on your epic bike packing or bike tour. But let's take this off because man, it's hot. <laughs> and you know what? I'm gonna leave this kid on for the rest of this video. So how we're gonna actually clean everything because you might be saying, well, aren't you gonna be gross or isn't your kit always gonna be smelly or dirty and won't that give you saddle sores? Well, before you put that in the comments, this is what I'm actually gonna be bringing with in a little squeeze bottle. And it's a product I've actually been testing out and it works surprisingly well. This is a detergent that I've been trying out that is basically designed to remove sweat, body oils, and harsh chemical agents like chamois butter or other creams or lotions you may be using on the bike that isn't just something that your normal detergent may or may not help with. So essentially what I'm gonna be doing is bringing a few ounces of this with to simply just clean the chamois of my bib. So the game plan is, in conjunction with this, is once you get off the bike and you're in the hotel or your tent's all set up and you might have bathroom accessibility, granted this only works if you do, is essentially what we're gonna be doing is rinsing ourselves off in our kits, cleaning everything, wringing it out to get all the salt and sweat off of there because realistically that's your biggest enemy and just simply use a little bit of soap or body wash or whatever we have available in the hotel, then I'm going to scrub just the chamois of this red white bib short, short with just a few dollops of that detergent to clean and get out all the chamois butter because I will be bringing plenty of that for this trip out of the chamois to really thoroughly clean it every night. Then we're simply just gonna roll that into a big dry towel, wring it out to get most of the moisture out and then hang stuff to dry and then go about our business getting dinner or do anything else for the rest of the evening so that it can dry by the time we leave in the morning. Then obviously I would throw on my merino wool t-shirt and shorts to walk around casually for the rest of the day. That's why I really like the merino wool stuff because even if I am wearing it on the bike, it does dry out and doesn't smell really, really quickly when I'm getting off the bike. So that's the beauty of the merino wool fabric in general. And trust me, I put that shirt through its paces and I know that it works. So that's essentially the thought process and system. I hope this helps. And if you've never done something like this or you're a person who always wears full thermals and you gotta take half your stuff off to put stuff on and you're constantly too hot or too cold, this is my layering system for this trip and realistically how I ride in general, obviously not to this degree of all the clothing options, but gives you a sense of an idea of how I'm gonna do it. So I hope you like this video and you're subscribed to my channel as well as you have notifications on so you can see what happens with my San Francisco to LA trip as well as you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I will be posting a lot during the trip that is gonna happen between March 6th to March 13th, as well as if you wanna help out and help me pay for burritos along the way, you can pick up some merch in my Spreadshirt or support me on Patreon, links in the description below, where I do offer one-on-one -on -one Zoom consultations for anything cycling related every single month for my top two tier levels. And lastly, thanks for watching this episode of Locked In. Let's get talking.